A lot of people don't seem to understand where I'm going with these stories about uh, Asian history uh, in terms of race and intelligence. Well, one of the things that I think a lot of people seem to forget in all of this talk about scientific racialism uh, is that what you're actually talking about is human beings and human behavior. All that stuff about genetics is ultimately just backing something up, backing up a statement that is ultimately about the way that human beings behave. Because ultimately that's all that we actually have to go on when we judge somebody else is what they actually do and what they say, I suppose. All the other stuff, whether or not they're intelligent, we don't know. We have no way of knowing that. We can only go by what people actually do. And this is why I talk about things like history, because I believe that uh, history, um, as to be pointed out, is ultimately the story of human activity. And what I like to, uh, what I would like to in this video is bring to people's attention something that I think that people know all along, especially people of uh, people in North America. Uh, say 150 years ago, it was common knowledge that the Irish immigrants were uh, addicted or addictive, uh, violent, fast-tempered, and had serious impulse control issues, and were stupid. It was actually believed that this is the case. Um, now, the problem is, of course, that there's a good chance that the statistics would back one up in that case. In other words, you go look in the prisons, look at the membership in criminal organizations, uh, look at uh, the uh, incidences of violent activity, and cross-reference that with the per person's ethnicity in a city like Boston or Toronto or Montreal or something, and um, I'm afraid that there's almost certainly a good chance that you're going to find out that the Irish are overrepresented in whatever stats you gather. It isn't like that anymore. Why? Because the Irish, who unfortunately, and forgive the word, were referred to as white niggers at the time, um, were that way because of environmental factors, because of the fact that uh, uh, they were uh, the underclass in society at the time. They really were a real underclass. If you actually study the way that the Irish peasantry uh, lived, its conditions, living conditions, the conditions that people were born into and essentially forced to live uh, under, uh, were pretty conducive to creating a desperately poor uh, underclass that uh, ended up as immigrants to North American cities and populated the tenements and slums and uh, filled out the ranks of the criminals. I've got a bunch of links below that illustrate all of this, but I don't think it's anything that we haven't seen before. Now, if we'd actually gone by that data and drawn the same conclusions that the people at the time drew about the Irish, we would have assumed that the Irish were somewhat less than human. People did seem to sincerely believe this. But going going back a hundred years before that, and the Irish wouldn't have looked any less human than anyone else. Nowadays, I don't think that the Irish are any less civilized than any other uh, European people, any other people in the world. And in fact, I don't think that there's any sort of deviation now, in Canada at least, in terms of Irish crime rates or rates of uh, violent uh, impulse-driven crime or anything like that in Canada or the States anymore. I haven't done a huge amount of research in it, but you, it's just not something that one hears about other than as a joke. Half the time, more than half the time, told by the Irish themselves. So, everything that... All the studies that have been done about scientific ra racialism are based upon studies that have taken place now or in the last few years comparatively, say, half a century. How do we know that these are valid? Were they, would they have been valid a hundred years ago? Would they, have been, would they be valid if we were around to do it in a uh, in hundred years from now? We don't know, because conditions change. People's conditions in society, their cultural milieu changes, which could completely, which does completely actually, alter the outcome of any sort of research that we do on human 
behavior. It's all very well to study people's genetics, but you have to cross-reference that with their actual conduct in order to uh, draw any conclusions, even erroneous conclusions, uh, as to what this data actually means. Finally, I have to point out that when, I'm, when, when I approach this issue, I'm not even challenging any of Rushton's data. Some people are doing that, but I'm not. I'm saying, let's say, for the sake of argument here, and it's not that I do accept it blindly, but let's say that I will accept Rushton's data blindly at face value. It still doesn't make sense. Or at least I'll say this, we still do not have nearly enough data, not one one thousandth of the data that we would require to draw any conclusions at all um, in terms of uh, whether or not uh, intelligence or any of that sort of thing, criminal criminality is racially identifiable or racially classifiable or um, more likely to be prevalent in one race as another. We don't know. We don't have enough information. What this study is about, what this, what uh, Rushton's theories are about, are human behavior. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. And in order to draw any conclusions about human behavior, we have to study human behavior. The studies are nowhere near exhaustive enough, and they cannot, in the very nature of things, be exhaustive enough. Thank you.